In this video, I'm going to explain how you can get black backgrounds in your images uh, using only some artificial light and the settings in your camera, no need for a backdrop. Stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Delightful! Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and this video is all about getting black backgrounds in your images, uh, whether you're in the studio, whether you're taking portraits or macro, um, you can do this pretty much anywhere because it really only involves some artificial light and uh, choosing the right settings in your camera. This is one of the most common questions that I get asked after showing off some macro shots. I'll have a nice bright subject in the front and a black background. How did you get that black background? Because we didn't see you put a black backdrop behind your images, you didn't talk about it. Well, it's because it's deceptively simple. It's all in the settings, it's all in the lighting. So I'm going to grab a subject, grab some lighting and uh, show you exactly how to do this in your own images. I'm not going to spend long talking about what our subject is today because it really doesn't matter. You could be shooting macro or portraiture or uh, products. Um, the principles of what we're doing today stay the same. Uh, you might need to scale it up and use different settings, but the idea behind it will be the same no matter uh, the environment, no matter the scale that you're shooting at, and no matter the subject. So my subject today is going to be a little bit of everything. He's uh, a person, he's also a product and he's really small so it's macro. If you know who this character is let me know down in the comments, I want to know whether you're all as nerdy as I am, um, but if you're not it doesn't matter, he's just a stand-in for whatever you want to shoot with a black background. We'll be taking a couple of portraits of this guy and I'll explain how we set up this shot to get a black background no matter what is actually in the background. What's going to be in the background of my shot today is just what's naturally there. Uh, these bookcases, I won't be moving anything out of the way, I won't be putting in any backdrops. Uh, all we're going to do today is add some lighting and change our settings and this shot that you see now is going to become a nice moody black background shot. The first step towards getting a black background image is basically to uh, ruin your shot. What we want to do is massively underexpose our shot so that everything in the background is absolutely black. That means changing our settings. So the settings that we were just shooting on, um, ISO 500, f5.6 and 1 60th of a second gets us uh, a pretty average looking shot and a pretty average looking histogram. Now you're going to want to bring up your histogram on your camera. Most cameras have this function. It's probably buried in the settings if it doesn't come up automatically. But what that's going to allow us to do is check on our next shot how much of our image is actually black. So you'll see here that our uh, histogram is actually um, most of the pixels are in the middle with the exception of a few dark ones where uh, the background is already quite dark where the um, where the shelf goes in on our next shot though you'll see that it's pitch black we've got nothing in the shot and most of the pixels are all over on that extreme left hand side of the histogram the settings that we've changed to are uh, one two hundredth of a second f13 and iso 100 so uh, much better settings, we're going to get a deeper depth of field, we're going to get uh, less grain because of that low ISO, and we're not going to get any camera shake at all with that 1 200th of a second shutter speed. This is all pretty good, and because of that really extreme histogram, it means that our image is completely black and there's nothing in our background to worry about. The next step is going to be uh, lighting our subject to counteract these settings. I've moved over here to start lighting my subject. And by doing that, I've actually changed the lighting situation in my room just a little bit by moving my studio light so that you can still see me. I've added a little bit of uh, ambient light to my scene and also my background. So that's something that you'll have to watch out for as not only the time of day changes and the ambient light changes around your shooting uh, space, but also when you're adding light to your scene, you're going to need a lot of control to make sure that no extra light spills over onto the background. 
uh, something that gives you an advantage here is having a big distance between your subject and your background, whether that's a full-size person, make sure that there's nothing uh, immediately behind them, or whether it's something small like this, make sure that you've got a good distance before you get to any objects in the background. So this distance between uh, the subject and the bookshelves is pretty good, and I can start adding some light to my scene. The aim of the game here is to get our subject as bright as possible without letting any of the light fall onto the backdrop. And to do that, we're going to need some artificial light that is highly controllable. I've got that in the form of the Adapter Lux Studio, but if you don't have an Adapter Lux, then you can use your studio strobes, your flash guns, uh, any continuous light that is bright enough that you can light your subject really, really bright without uh, letting it spill onto the background and light that up as well. So I'm going to get my Daps Look Studio out. I've got my uh, control pod down low on a little mini tripod here so that I can add lighting arms and still be able to shoot over the top of the control pod and onto the, uh, the upper half of my subject. So first thing I'm going to do is add a white lighting arm S, the brightest version of the white lighting arm that we have. That should give us a really good starting point to, uh, to start thinking about how we want our lighting to fall on our subject. Now all of your normal lighting techniques uh, still apply here. If you want to diffuse your light, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to uh, get some rim lighting coming in from the back, go ahead and do that. Just don't shine the light on the background. I'm going to add a couple more lighting arms here. Um, I'm using lighting arm S's all across the board so that we can get the maximum amount of light onto our subject. I'm also going to diffuse this second light and just move it around a little bit to, uh, to figure out where I actually want this light to sit to make sure that it's not in the frame. Now that I've got those two lights set up, I'm actually going to add a red light as well to give it a little bit more uh, atmosphere and a little bit of colour on the dark side of his face. Now that gives it a little bit more menace, but uh, I'm actually going to move my studio around and bring these lights in from a couple of different directions, try them out and figure out what I like best. I found a pretty good lighting setup here that I like. I've got uh, one light coming in, shining up from the bottom, another my key light coming in from the side, and then that red light on the dark side of his body, just giving it some really red, uh, some menacing, sinister look. One thing that the red is doing though, is spilling onto my background. I'm not sure if I can find it here, but there is a little bit of red coming back here and shining onto the bookcases behind the subject. The way that I'm going to deal with that is to narrow the beam angle on my lighting arm so that it's only shining on the subject exactly where I want it to be. Now that we've got our lighting set up and our settings decided, we can uh, play around and make sure we can get the perfect image without compromising that black background. You can change your settings at this point. If your image is too bright, uh, up your shutter speed, have a smaller aperture, um, by all means change those to make your image darker. If you want to make your image brighter, do that using your lighting. Uh, increase the intensity of your lights, um, give more power to your flash, or in the case of the Adapter Look Studio, connect it to the app and uh, change the intensities of each lighting arm so that you have uh, the perfect image with the maximum amount of light on your subject and the, uh, the least amount of light on your background. What we're doing here is taking advantage of our camera's dynamic range. Cameras only have uh, a certain range of exposure that they can handle at one time. So if you're taking a photo of something really, really bright like we are today, then everything else is going to be really, really dark. It's the same effect that you get if you've ever taken a silhouette of um, a tree against a sunset or trying to take a picture of the inside of a room whilst it's light outside, the window is going to be really, really bright because the camera can't handle both the really bright areas and the really dark areas. If your camera can handle the really dark areas and the really bright areas, it might have a HDR mode. You're going to need to turn that off for shooting images like this. Your camera might try to uh, automatically pick out the darkness of your background when we actually want it to be deliberately as dark as possible. 
So that's one last little tip there. Um, but to recap, the main principles that we're working with today is to get a really, really bright subject and expose for your subject while leaving your background to be as dark as possible. You can do this by manipulating the settings in your camera and setting your exposure only for your subject, while also adding extra light into your scene without it hitting the backdrop. This is kind of the opposite to shooting a white background photograph like we did in our other product photography tutorial, um, where we were lighting uh, the background as much as possible so that it blows out the whites instead of dimming down the blacks and taking advantage of the shadows. I'll link that other video up here if you want to see another style of product photography for things like uh, selling on eBay and Amazon, that's really good. This works just as well for a more moody and a different kind of of product photo as well as portraits and macro. I use this technique all of the time in my other macro videos which I'm sure some of you have seen because I get quite a lot of questions on how to do it. Hopefully this video has answered those questions for you and if it has make sure to leave me a comment down below uh, telling me what you've used this for, what subjects you've been shooting with a black background. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and remember to subscribe. We've got lots more videos coming in 2020. Hit the bell button so you don't miss any. For now, I want to say a big thank you to Lord Shax from Destiny. If you hadn't already guessed that by now, you can go in the comments and pretend like you knew it earlier on. A big thank you to all of you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. What do you expect me to do with that? Why can't the rookies be more like you? Just thinking about it infuriates me. <laughs> you don't know when to quit. I love it.